Today, I'm going to show you how to get this Broadlink RM4 Pro IR and RF Universal Remote into Home Assistant. Before, I was using this Sonoff 433 RF bridge, but this thing is very limited in controlling 433 MHz devices, such as ceiling fans that you saw previously in my video. So that's why today, I'm going to show you how to get this RM4 Pro into Home Assistant. That way, you don't need to use the Broadlink app. That way, you're making sure that this thing will never get online and it's all local. The first thing you want to do is install this app, Broadlink app. Download it and open it. Unfortunately, you need this app to get this device onto your Wi-Fi network. Once it's on your Wi-Fi network, then you can block it from ever getting online. After installing it, go ahead and sign in. If this is your first time, then go ahead and sign up for an account. So go ahead and sign up and sign in. Once you sign in, it will automatically find a new device. Go ahead and click on it. Click on it again. And then join. You'll want your Wi-Fi credentials, so go ahead and enter it. Enter your Wi-Fi SSID and then the password for that. If all is good, go ahead and click on the device again. On the upper right hand corner, click on the three dots and confirm lock device. Make sure that lock device is unchecked, otherwise it will not integrate into Home Assistant. Now jump to your Home Assistant, go down to settings, go over to integrations, add integration. Or as you can see on the upper right hand corner, it automatically found a new device and then click on configure. Click on Submit. It is possible that it will fail, so go ahead and give it the exact IP address. Using something like Advanced IP Scanner, you can find the Universal Remote IP address, and then click on Submit again. Give it a name, and then click on Submit. Pick the area that you want, this is optional, and then click on Finish. You are now finished. Now that we've added the remote into Home Assistant, let's get the remote to learn the buttons on the devices. For me, I'm using it to control these ceiling fans module. So let's go into Developers tool, go into Services. In Service, choose Remote, colon, space, learn command. The target would be the Broadlink Universal, the remote that we just added. Make sure that you're checking all of these boxes, Device, Command, Command Type, and Alternative. For Device, I'm controlling my Fan Bedroom. The command will be Speed Low. The Command Type is RF. Because the ceiling fan remote is using RF, make sure that Alternative is Flip On. What does that mean? It means that for whatever reason, the ceiling fan remote that I'm using constantly flips between three or four codes. When you check box the alternative, this makes sure that the universal remote will capture all of these various codes. When you're ready, click on Call Service. On the universal remote itself, you'll see that on the front, the LED screen will turn from blank to amber orange color. On your remote control, the one that you're trying to get the Broadlink to learn, on that remote, go ahead and press the button as much as you want until that amber light goes off. If the amber light ever turns on again, go ahead and on the remote, press that button again. When the Broadlink finally learns all of the various codes of that one single button, then the amber light will go off and you are done. In HA, you can see that there's a green check mark to let you know you're done as well. So right now we're done with speed low. We're going to program the speed medium. Click on call service. Once again, on the Broadlink, it should turn amber orange. On your 433 MHz remote, press the button that you want to learn. So for me, I'm going to press the medium speed button again and again and again until the amber light goes off. So on your remote control, if it's a super simple remote that spits out just one code, then don't turn on this alternative. Leave it blank. If you're curious what the codes look like, go ahead and log into your Home Assistant on your network. Go into the config folder and go into the storage. By default, this folder is hidden, so make sure that you check the hidden item to make sure that you're seeing hidden folders and then open that folder. Two files should be there. All you care is this Broadlink codes file. 
right click on it and open it with notepad. And here you can see the codes are pretty wild, it's crazy. On my remote, all I care is about the lights, the low, the medium, the high, and obviously the fan stop, right? For some reason, it didn't capture some of these buttons. So I manually have to do the learn function of HA once more to make sure that HA learns all of the buttons that I want. That's why I'm showing you this method to make sure that you can open the file to verify that all the buttons that you learn are there. Now, here comes the ridiculously annoying parts. As you can see, I have the fan here, the bedroom, second floor. There's only one button right now, which is the bedroom fan low. If I want to flip it to the low speed position, I click on it and then I flip it to the on position. If I want it to be off, then I just click on it and it will flip to the off position. Obviously, controlling it manually is annoying, okay? That's why all of this would be automated. For instance, if I'm home and the room is too hot or the house is too hot, then the AC automatically kicks in. As soon as the AC automatically kicks in, then the fan will turn on as well to spread all of that cool air around the house. If for whatever reason you want to control it manually, that's fine as well. So that's why we're doing it right here. Let's go into the settings. Click on helpers. Click on helpers again. Create helper. Go down to toggle. The name will be fan kitchen low. The icon can be whatever you want. I'm choosing it fan and then click create. I'm just going to create all of these buttons for the fan in the kitchen right now. That's why I'm telling you this process is painful. Once you're done, you should have something like this if you want to control it manually. So it's fan high speed, fan lights to turn the light on or off fan low speed, fan medium speed, and of course, fan stop speed. Next up, let's create the automations behind it. So go down to settings, go over to automations, create automation. I already have some automation set up, so I'm just going to duplicate it. The fan entity will be fan kitchen low. If the fan kitchen low is toggled to on position, then go ahead and call the service. The service will be remote send command. The target will be this entity, which is the Broadlink Universal. That's the remote that we added. The device will be fan kitchen. The command is speed low. And uncheck all of these boxes. And then click on save. If you forgot all of this, such as the device name and the command name, then go ahead and open the text file that I showed you earlier. Here's the text file one more time. Here's all of the device name, and here are all of its commands. Once you're ready, go ahead and click on Save and save it. For me, I'm going to name it as Fan Kitchen Low Speed. If you create something to turn on and obviously create something to turn off, so let's duplicate it. The trigger will be when it flips to the off position. As soon as it goes to the off position, go ahead and go into the command, which is the speed stop, and then click on save. For me, it will be fan kitchen stop, hit save. So go ahead and create all of these automations if you want to control this thing manually. If you want to create buttons nice and pretty so that you can control it manually, then go ahead and go into whatever tab that you want go into the upper right hand corner with the three dots and click on it, edit dashboard, add a car. Personally, I like glance, so I'm going to click on glance. Because I already created this glance car, I'm going to edit right now. It's going to be this toggle button that we created earlier. And there you go, this is just one button. Next up, you'll want to create something like low, medium, and high. And the light, of course, if you want to control the light manually. And then click on Save. All right, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful on how to get this Broadlink RM Pro into your Home Assistant to have things automated. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, and thanks for watching.